The first time I went to Minneapolis St. Paul, aka the Twin Cities, it was actually a layover when I first came to the US for college. But of course, since then, I've visited dozens of times by myself, with friends, or with kids. And so if you're planning to spend some time here with little travelers with family, I hope this gives you a few ideas. First, let's get some coffee. First day, we went to the St. Paul's Children's Museum. If you have a membership to your local children's museum, and if that happens to be part of the ACM or the Association of Children's Museums, you may have some sort of reciprocal benefit that gives you a discounted access here too. The entrance to this museum is on the second floor, and after we purchased tickets, we were each given a little sticker. The first exhibit, after passing through the snack shop, featured a building space with PVC pipes, and there were some little bridges, little swings. We had a really fun time building an imaginary city of some sort. And then we ended up playing pretend with the little plastic hamsters. Also on the second floor are the Sprouts area, which is designed for babies, toddlers with soft climb structures, as well as the Imaginopolis, which actually recently changed to a nature-based pretend space. However, we didn't get a chance to check it out this time. On the window side of this second floor was a multi-story slide called the Scramble. The top of the slide is this silver opening disc thing, but the entrance is actually downstairs on the first floor. Judging from the other kids' faces, I bet it's pretty fun, but none of my kids wanted to try it. <laughs> on the first floor, besides the entrance to that big slide, there is a little shipwreck themed area. And then towards the back, there is a section for bubble and water play. I will say their bubble solution station is not as impressive as some other museums, but the car wash is amazing. The museum provides these raincoats to help keep the kids dry, and there are all these squeegees, brushes, and this drain with a car wash thing that just drips and sprays soapy water from the top. having a lot of fun. Everyone's completely wet and soapy, but it's amazing. Outside is a mud kitchen with plenty of dirt to go around. Moving to the third floor, our world is kind of real life based pretend play. So there's this post office, a lighting and hardware store, a little market, stuff like that. The post office was definitely the most popular. It's again a pretty simple concept. There are empty cardboard boxes going up when you turn the wheel all the way to the second story and then they can be sent down again in different chutes and they can get collected again perhaps with the help of this little rolly basket and then they go up again. All the kids wanted a turn doing each part and it was a huge hit. Oh, thank you. Yeah. The hardware store had a wall of light switches that are fantastic for little hands or for grown-ups who just want to beat a personal record on how quickly they can turn off all the lights. In the middle of that third floor area was more building material type play as well as the city bus kind of structure. Should we sit here? We're on a bus. We're riding a bus today. Where's your bus stop? <laughs> there was a cute outside patio with plants and some mirrors and some musical instruments. Towards 
the other end of the third floor was a crafting area and a special exhibit based on the movie Inside Out. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. The exhibit had various stations exploring the different feelings and people get to leave little sticky notes on these little memory balls. It makes more sense if you've seen the movie. I especially resonate with this parent who wrote a note about the kids not listening. There was a station that would detect what facial expressions you were making and kind of try to label them as happy or sad or angry. And the kids loved making faces at that. There were still exhibits that we haven't checked out and we could easily spend the whole day here. But at this point, we were all tired. And so it's time to get some dessert. We headed over to the Minneapolis side of town and we made a stop at Edward's Dessert Kitchen. Super cute inside with ice creams and cakes and fairly interesting flavors too. Everything was pretty tasty, but definitely on the pricier end. Here's the US Bank Stadium that's relatively new and it's meant to look like a Vikings ship you know, for the Minnesota Vikings. We went to check in at our Airbnb and drop off our bags. If you're interested in more details, I have a full review on a previous video, which I'll link below. I generally prefer Airbnbs if the cost is similar, mainly because we like to travel in a group and it's nice to have a space to congregate. I also feel like Airbnb spaces tend to be a little bit more unique if you know where to look. But if you more of a hotel person, we have also stayed at the Spring Hill Suites over in the St. Paul side before. It's a newer hotel. It's got this amazing kiddie pool and the staff were really nice. And we got upgraded to a suite even with just gold status. So yeah, it's a win. And there's a toilet. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, we need bed sheets. We freshened up and headed out for dinner. Some areas in Minneapolis seem to be a little bit in rougher shape than I remembered in the past, with kind of abandoned houses or dilapidated exteriors. I never quite felt unsafe, just actually a little bit heartbroken to see this. Ramen Kazama is kind of around the corner from such a neighborhood, and that's where we went for dinner. The egg is good, the chassis was good. My parents love this place, and their noodles are pretty legit. It's pretty much a staple for us. The next day, we start our day downtown. Most buildings in the downtown areas in the Twin Cities are connected via Skyway, so even in the winter, it's actually pretty easy to access the different shops and stay warm. On this particular day, the downtown office space felt a little bit quiet. Not sure if we're just too early or if something else is going on or if something has changed. But anyway, we went to Cardinal Donuts for breakfast. They had a wide selection of both cake and raised donuts and of course coffee. tried a few different options and everyone liked it. Late morning, we headed over to the sculpture garden outside the Walker Art Center. The garden itself is free for entry, although you do have to pay for parking, and it is home to the iconic Spoon Bridge and Cherry sculpture. There are a bunch of other sculptures in the park too. The silo is our personal favorite. I will warn that it does get a little bit hot if it's a really sunny day and there's just no opportunity for shade. So make sure you're bringing a stroller for the kids and plenty of water.
With everyone completely exhausted and thirsty after the gardens, we decided to stop by for some juice. Impulse had some fresh options with interesting flavors. Maybe not the most stereotypically kid-friendly, but you know what? We liked it, the grown-ups. We picked up some takeout food from Bonchan, which is a chain Korean fast food restaurant, and just enjoyed it at the Airbnb. I think that's the other nice thing about doing a short-term rental. You get to get takeout food, which sometimes it's an easier thing to do with kids than sitting in a restaurant properly. When we have sufficiently recharged, we headed over to the Mall of America. It is apparently still the largest mall in the U.S. We didn't come here for the shopping shopping though, we are here mainly for the other attractions. First, we tried the mirror maze. They give you these little disposable gloves to wear so you don't put handprints all over the mirror, which makes sense. And you do need your hand kind of out, touching the mirror to prevent yourself from running straight on to a mirror. And oh my god, this maze was such a nauseating experience. Look away from the screen for five seconds if you also get motion sickness. I definitely got turned around and I was so ready to be done with it. This is new, yeah? We haven't seen this, uh, but we can't go through. We can't really go through. Luckily, my husband is a little more directionally talented and he found the exit and came back for us. We made it! <laughs> It was a lot of flashing light, a lot of turning around, and there was loud music. Overall, a little overstimulating for an introvert, but I think some people like this kind of thing. After that, we went to the M&M store. Right as you walk in, there is this super intense milk chocolate scent. We got a small bag of candy sort of as a souvenir to be enjoyed over the next few weeks. Lastly, we stopped at the Nickelodeon Universe. You can get tickets online or at the electronic booth, and they can either be like an all-day pass or for a specific number of tickets, like 54 tickets. Most rides are three tickets per person, so plan accordingly. After you pay, you get a little wristband with a barcode, and as long as they're not the all-day unlimited pass, one wristband can be shared across the whole group. There was a slight malfunction at our first ride, which was not promising. It took a little while for someone to come and fix it, and meanwhile those kids are just up there on the top, hanging out. It was interesting. Finally, it was our turn. My oldest wanted to sit all by herself so that she can go nuts spinning. My two thoughts are A, I am so glad I'm not on the crazy spinning one, and B, they grow up so fast, she doesn't want me to sit with her anymore. The carousel is next. Compared to the average carousel, I would say this one spins pretty fast. So, fair warning. There are plenty of other rides that we didn't have time for. There is a little school bus that is usually pretty fun for this age group, as is the Ferris wheel. And if you have bigger or more adventurous kids, there are plenty of more exciting rides in this park too. Leaving the mall, we drive back towards downtown Minneapolis and grab dinner at Edo, which served Italian food. Hello. We did not try the THC drinks, but that's an option for anyone who's interested. But we did try their own Edo limonata, and it was actually really good. Kid approved too. Hey, all over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so upsetting! That is so bad! Everything overall was pretty tasty. Next morning, we packed up and checked out of our Airbnb, and we went to grab some donuts from Boggarts. We had never tried them before, and they're quite large. I think I prefer the cardinal ones a bit more. This is a little too thick and too bready. We went to Como Park Zoo and Conservatory, which is completely free. And as far as zoos go, there's also the Minneapolis Zoo, which cost money to go in. And honestly, for little kids, Como is plenty. There were ducks, flamingos, turtles. Penguins. 
penguins, various large cats, gorillas, giraffes, and seals, and a show. The toddler had the most fun. The girls did not appreciate the hot weather, so they took plenty of breaks inside the stroller. The last thing was heading to lunch. We got some pho in St. Paul. It's called I pho, and it's not particularly fancy, but it's legit. Plenty of other items on the menu too, if pho is not your thing. A few blocks away is Ding Tea, which is a Taiwanese franchise for bubble tea. Really good bubbles, good tea flavor. It's the real deal. And that's a wrap for our 48 hours in the Twin Cities. Let me know if you've been to the city before, what your favorite thing was, or if you're planning a trip, feel free to post any questions in the comments below. I'll talk to you again next time. Bye.